Well, folks, uh, many of the festivals, customs, and rituals that are followed today, you know, they stem from our understanding and study of myths, symbols, and their traditional mems. What are these mems? These mems are ideas, culture, system, style, or behavioral patterns that are passed on by imitation or by non-genetic means. Now, why am I talking about uh, these concepts today? It's because one has to understand that myth does not stand by itself, but it is tied to certain uh, rituals. And if you look at these rituals, these rituals are an offshoot from religions. Now, when we talk about the primacy of a ritual, many scholars and learned men believe that these myths and religious doctrines, you know, results from these rituals. Now, these rituals by itself spring out of your symbols and sacred geometry. Now, what are these sacred geometries? What are these symbols? And this concept kind of forms a, a kind of a fractal. Now, you have to understand fractals as some repeating patterns that display at every scale. So they are essentially called or known as expanding symmetries or evolving symmetries. Now, why do you need to understand these evolving symmetries? This is, this is why to understand this uh, evolving or expanding symmetries, symbolism was introduced. Now, it was largely introduced to bring in a sense of solidarity into understanding our deeper con uh, subconscious mind. Now for that example, let us look at even a language. A language is quite symbolic. If you give to think, it is very symbolic because there are various speech sounds which create combinations to formulate words which have certain meanings. And that is what certain communities can interpret and understand the meaning underlying the symbols in the form of language. And what is language? Is a di it's different sets of sounds and vibrations. Now, mythology is nothing but a symbolic expression of this language and art. Okay, now why you have to understand all of these fractals together where you're talking about symbology, you're talking about myths, you're talking about rituals, you're talking about customs. That is because, you know, traditionally, if you look at it, it is only the symbols that speak to the subconscious mind. You have a language or a construct or words that only speak to your conscious part. But what about your subconscious part? Right, and it is the subconscious part which is really running you, you know, or putting you on the feet, and it's taking you from you know one part of the destiny to another part of the destiny. And it is only this conscious mind is just responding to kind of impulses that are implanted for you in this world of illusion. Okay, you respond to those impulses in the manner that you have been trained um, as per you know your subconscious your subconscious is actually directing your conscious mind so in that sense your true world lies within your subconscious where you can expand enormously right and that is where is your seat of all your desires your patterns your uh, psychological inclinations your desire uh, your habits your belief systems and also to a very great extent, some of your programmed life forces. Now, it is very important that if you understand nakshatras, you can have a medium to which you can transform, you can take control of your life, you can awaken, you can change certain things and you can reprogram your conscious, your subconscious mind. And that is why I started the series of saying, you know, stellar mind programming. Right. So uh, why I'm repeating this is if you have understand today's nakshatra, which is Rohini nakshatra, 
Rohini nakshatra, the shakti of this nakshatra is called as a Rohana shakti. It means the power to make things grow and to create. It is the most fertile nakshatra. It bestows fertility. Fertility in your thoughts. Fertility. So if you can seed good thoughts, you can seed good intentions, you can seed good habits, you can seed good desires and seed good belief systems. That is what Jyotish is all about. Jyotish is a science of light, but it is to study all of these systems of myths, symbols, rituals in the wrap or flux of these energies that are operating, interoperating between these planets, stars and their motions. Okay, so let's go to Rohini Nakshatra. So if you understand the concept that it is Jyotish cannot be studied separately when you, you know, by leaving these myths, these symbols, these rituals, these customs, these festivals that you follow, because festivals which you follow are coming from a community. Okay, these are your traditional, uh, you know, mems, which are directing you. And these are what your ancestors have embedded into you so that you can carry forward some of those symbols, those myths, those rituals that they have been doing. So there is deep rooted secrets embedded into all of that you've been doing. Okay, so let's go to the, the indication for this nakshatra. That's Rohini nakshatra. The indication is the star of ascent. Now, if you have to ascend, if you have to rise, if you have to create, that means you have to deeply dive into these myths, understand the symbology so that whatever has been registered behind it, you can bring it back to your conscious mind. You should be able to activate your uh, uh, your impulses to be able to react to situations in a much more informed manner. Okay, in a manner how, um, you know, people wouldn't take any impulsive reactions. So the nature of this nakshatra or the category of the star is called as Dhruva nakshatra, which means it's fixed, it's permanent. So which is a great thing to have for a Rohini uh, native. And the direction of motion of this nakshatra, okay? Also, you have to understand this adhomukha. Now, uh, let's go to the pratima. The pratima or the symbol is the cart or the chariot. Okay? The chariot was a kind of a wheel of commerce in the past. And uh, so you can see a lot of um, uh, activities, trade, Okay, uh, agriculture, produce, all of this was connected to this nakshatra, okay, being the fertile nakshatra. The devata, which is associated with this uh, nakshatra is Prajapati or Brahma, the, the creator. Okay, the desire of this nakshatra is to attract a lover and unite with him or her. And the result of the shakti, the basis and the desire is creation. Okay, so let's go and talk about some of those general themes that you want to know about or the keywords that you want to know about and you would probably want to, you know, pen them down and keep visiting them uh, today and maybe you can add more uh, based on the experiences that you have today. So some of the themes for today or those keywords or the general keywords that you want to keep in mind are truthful, sowing, planting, Cattle, conveyance, rise, climb, beauty, art, music, feminine, critical, slim, dignified, settled mind, religious, meditative, learned, lucky, philanthropic, refined, clean habits, firm views, influential, a good guide, a lovely in appearance, loyalty, favoritism, influential, manipulative, passionate, sexually seductive, elegant, attractive, charismatic, love child, luxury, snobbish, pampered, materialistic, critical of those who they considered not up to their own standards.
So this is a summary. Now, many of you have asked, how do you use these? You don't, have, you don't have need to know how to use these keywords. You just remember these keywords. That is what is the connecting point. These are the symbols in the form of a language or words. These are power words which will connect you to this nakshatra. Okay. So thank you for watching my videos.